who here has heard about inflation lately, right? It's everywhere. It's on the news. Uh, it's all over social media. Uh, your friends are talking about it. Maybe you heard about it at work. Inflation, you see it every time you go to the store. That's the topic of the day. We're talking about it. We're going to break it all down. Stick around. Hi, I'm Antonio Sabella with Vision Wealth Management. Welcome to the latest video hot topic today. We're talking about inflation. Uh, like I said, you see it everywhere. You experience it when you go to the store and you spend money and things cost more than they used to. So let's talk about why inflation is happening and what's going on there and maybe what should we expect going forward. So to start, Inflation uh, comes back to supply and demand. Remember your old econ class. If there's more supply than there is demand, prices are gonna come down. Prices have to match the market. And if there's more demand, more people want something than there is supply of it, prices will rise. Uh, how do we break it down into real simple terms? Let's tell a story, let's pretend. Uh, there's a town, the only place you can get uh, food in the town is at a little pizzeria. That's it. There's no grocery store. There's no anything else. There's just a pizza place. Not a bad place to live, uh, but let's talk about the story. Everybody shows up there in the morning to get their food for the day, to buy their pizza. Uh, let's say that the guy sells pizza for $10 a pizza, and he makes 60 pizzas, and there's 60 people in the town. They all show up. Everybody gives him their $10. He sells all of his pizza. He goes home happy. Everybody eats they're happy. Now let's say that everybody shows up the next day, all 60 people with their $10, and he's got 30 pizzas. He doesn't have 60. He said, hey, flour shipment was late, having a hard time getting cheese. Uh, we got 30 pizzas, that's all we've got. Uh, and so people say, hey, I'll take a pizza, I'll take a pizza. Next thing you know, he realizes, hey, I can charge more for this because I got 60 people who want pizza. I've only got 30. Uh, all of a sudden, the price isn't $10. Uh, somebody says, well, I'll pay 15 for a pizza. I really want one. Guy in the back of the line yells, I'll pay $20. Uh, next thing you know, pizza guy's selling for more. Now, he's maybe not making uh, more money because he's only selling half the pizzas, but the price of pizza has gone up. Inflation has happened. There was more demand then there was supply, and so the prices went up to meet uh, uh, the, uh, the market, for the market to come into equilibrium. So uh, let's flip it back around. Let's say uh, all of a sudden a uh, guy goes, great, I got 30 pizzas, I'm selling them, only 10 people show up to the store. Maybe another restaurant opened, who knows what happened. Somebody found a grocery store, 10 people show up, 30 pizzas, he's not getting $20 a pizza, he's probably not getting $10 a pizza. If he wants to sell them, all of a sudden there's more pizza than there are uh, people, the price is gonna go down. There's an oversupply. So we've had the opposite of that, right? We've had prices rising. Part of that is due to the pandemic, supply chains which are extremely complex, right? Lots of moving parts and pieces to end up with whatever the final product is that you're, you're buying off the shelf at the store. Uh, not so many of them on the shelf anymore because if just one component's missing or one component is running behind, uh, all of a sudden you've got supply chain issues. Uh, and so what happens there, you have a lower level of supply. The second thing that's happened is there's a lot of demand. Part of the reason there's a lot of demand is because the government has been mailing out money to everybody, literally mailing out money to people. Uh, if we look back at what has happened, now this is not a commentary on whether they should have or shouldn't have, this is just simply there's a lot more money in the system now than there was pre-pandemic. If we go back, the government has printed up a lot of money and sent it out to uh, small businesses, to individuals, to larger businesses, to banks. Money's going everywhere, right? So what happens is we've got more money in the system. Let's say, for example, that we go back to uh, the circumstance of supply is now lower, but there's also excess cash. That guy in the back that's saying, I'll pay $20 for the pizza, maybe he's willing to pay more because he's got a pocket full of money because he just cashed a check that came in the mail that he wasn't expecting. Uh, all of a sudden, prices are even higher. So we start to see that with inflation. Hard to get things, lots of demand for things. What happens? All of a sudden, prices go up. Now, whether it's temporary, transitory is the word that they like to use, whether it's permanent, whether prices will go back, who knows? Uh, anybody that tells you that they know the answer to what's gonna happen in the future, uh, don't listen to them, go the other direction. They're packaging up opinions as facts. We don't know what'll happen. The best thing you can do is plan for your specific circumstance. Sit down and take a look at how will inflation, for example, impact my portfolio. Certain types of assets uh, do better in an inflationary environment. Certain types do not, 
How much of what do you own? That's something that you should be figuring out. If you don't figure that out on your own, sit down with your guy, your girl, your person, your financial advisor, figure it out with them. If you don't have one of those, uh, look me up. Contact information is everywhere. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, give me the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like it. Lots of stuff always coming out. Uh, thanks for being here. I hope you learned something and I'll see you soon.